This video is brought to you by HubSpot. The recent firing and rehiring of Sam Altman is a much bigger deal than you think. While some people consider it a misunderstanding, I see it as a huge power move that transparently says that GPT-5 is in the works and that Altman is cooking something that could turn the world upside down. In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything we know about GPT-5 and show how Altman is gonna change the world. Apparently. To begin, let's quickly recap the story of Altman's firing and rehiring. On November 21st, Altman, a co-founder and the CEO of OpenAI, was abruptly fired by the company's board of directors. This move sent shockwaves through the community and sparked a fierce debate about the role of corporate governance in the development of AI. Who should decide which way to go? The board's decision to fire Altman was met with immediate backlash from OpenAI employees who rallied around their leader. Over 95% of the company's workforce signed an open letter demanding Altman's reinstatement, and many threatened to quit if their demands were not met. Altman is known for his ambitious vision for the future of AI and his commitment to using AI to benefit humanity. He's also a strong advocate for transparency and accountability in the development of AI. That's why his approach is so different from how it usually goes. Instead of long lab testings, he just released GPT into the wild and allowed millions of people to not only do the testing for him, but also tightly integrate ChatGPT into their lives and work. In a surprising turn off events, just four days after Altman's firing, the OpenAI board reversed its decision and reinstated him as CEO. The board cited the overwhelming support for Altman from employees as a major factor in their decision. However, news articles mentioned Microsoft quite a few times as the ones who actually reinstated Altman. And on top of that, the whole old board is now gone and has been replaced with Altman's people. And to me, that's a clear flag that something big is about to happen. Why would the board fire their greatest asset and leader? And why would Microsoft pull their strings to reinstate Altman? The answer is simple. GPT-5. The old board has expressed their dissatisfaction with Altman's way of doing things quite a few times. The initial board was assembled with a non-profit goal, but Altman changed the course towards commercialization. But Altman changed the course towards commercialization. And if we remember the recent leaks about the QSTAR, QSTAR project, we clearly see that the old board was hesitant to release an untested and possibly raw product to the masses. This QSTAR project is really interesting, and I believe it's gonna become the foundation for the GPT-5. So what's the deal with GPT-5? It's said to be a big step up from the older versions. The plan is for it to be really good at writing stuff, coding, and even making creative content, and it should sound a lot like a real person wrote it. GPT-5 is also supposed to be better at not having hallucinations, aka making stuff up and giving false information. It should also become faster and more versatile in its capabilities, possibly uniting all standalone features such as Dolly and Code Interpreter into one model. So it's like they're putting all the good stuff into one big, super smart AI. This all sounds great, but what everyone's missing is how it's all gonna work. That's exactly where the QSTAR project comes in. And by the way, OpenAI now refuses to give any comments on it, which is definitely worth looking into since the company's been pretty transparent about their findings. So. What's the QSTAR? From what we've heard, QSTAR is the new algorithm that's capable of solving math problems it never saw before and do it autonomously. Current generative AI models, while being good at tasks like writing and language translation, rely on statistical predictions to determine the next word, leading to variations in responses to the same question. With math, there is only one answer, no variations. I will make it clear for you. It can think by itself and not just copy stuff. Current GPT-4 is really advanced, but it's still mostly a glorified copycat. QSTAR is supposed to actually think and possibly even reason. Does it sound like Terminator to you? Well, this is all very funny, but what makes it all really conspicuous to me is the fact that 
the reports about this project QSAR are quite inconsistent. For example, Reuters sources say that the board of directors has received a letter describing QSAR and its possible development. The Verge, however, claims that there was no such letter and the information ignores the letter but talks a lot about the QSAR itself. Again, OpenAI now is really secretive about QSAR, which means we're onto something here. Now it's time to take a quick pause and talk about this video sponsor, HubSpot. We both know how important it is nowadays to be your own boss, or at least to earn more by doing less. And there is no better way to do it than with AI. So I think you should check out a great new ebook called The Ultimate Guide to Using ChatGPT at Work. This ebook is a treasure trove of information on how to use ChatGPT, a powerful AI part language model to boost your productivity and efficiency at work. Whether you're looking for help with with simple tasks like information retrieval or complex projects like project management, this ebook has you covered. One of the best things about this ebook is that it's packed with practical tips and advice. For example, there is a section on how to use ChatGPT to create surveys, roadmaps, and improve conversion rates for websites. There's even a list of 100 ready-made prompts that you can use to get started with ChatGPT right away. If you're looking for a way to take your work to the next level, I highly recommend checking this out. It is truly a valuable resource that can help you save time, improve your workflow, and achieve your goals. This resource was made by HubSpot, who is the sponsor of today's video. All you need to do is click the link below to download it. Let's assume that QSTAR is really in development and is heading towards a release. What would that mean for ChatGPT? Given ChatGPT the ability to think and reason, even at the level of a preschooler, would mean that GPT-5 will be able to adapt to new situations and challenges and do it properly. It will adapt its strategies and responses as conditions change. ChatGPT will be able to tackle really complex tasks that require deep understanding and nuanced reasoning, solving the uh, above mentioned math problems, designing intricate algorithms and so on. QSTAR enhanced ChatGPT would become a boundless source of creativity, generating original and innovative content from poems and scripts to musical pieces and code, all without human's involvement. And it won't be copying and predictions, it will be the real deal, real thinking. On top of that, QSTAR would enable ChatGPT to tailor its interactions to individual users, understanding their unique preferences and learning styles. This personalized approach will lead to more meaningful and engaging conversations. If this all comes true, then the answer to can a robot write a symphony or can a robot turn a canvas into beautiful masterpiece will be affirmative. Right now, this may seem as far-fetched predictions and speculations, but I don't think we should ignore these obvious signs. Mark my word, GPT-5 will use QSTAR as a score. But when? I think the best way to answer this is by reading between the lines of this fire than higher incident, because the way it all went down gives us the biggest clues to how close QSTAR really is to powering the next generation of ChatGPT. Let's take a step back and examine the Sequence of events. Initially, Altman's team presented a memo to the board of directors detailing a significant breakthrough. This memo seems to have been a turning point leading to the board's decision to terminate Altman. A few days later, Big Daddy Microsoft comes back swinging and reinstates Altman while getting rid of the old board. The key question here is, why would Microsoft take such decisive action? The answer likely lies in the content of the memo and the strategic value of the QSTAR project. Microsoft's aggressive move suggests that QSTAR is not just a minor update, but a major leap forward. Beneath the surface of the recent OpenAI saga lies a pivotal moment, Sam Altman's letter to the company's board of directors. This letter, though shrouded in secrecy, holds the key to understanding the motivations behind Altman's abrupt removal and subsequent reinstatement as CEO. It is plausible that Sam Altman's letter to the OpenAI board of directors expressed excitement of the development team about the groundbreaking progress made on the development of QSTAR, the enormous potential it holds, and so on. I also think that Altman probably intended to roll out the system as soon as possible and make it commercialized, which is quite in line with his behavior as a visionary and an advocate for commercialization. What could have made the board get cold feet is the possible expressed caution. Altman's team knows better than anyone what this AI can do, 
And if they've written their concerns down, this could have given a wrong impression. Sounds quite believable, especially if we remember the tweet from one of the leakers who said, and I quote, AGI has been achieved internally. Altman then repeated the same on Reddit, confirming the leak. So what is AGI? AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence, which means the type of AI that possesses the ability to understand and reason at the same level as a human being. It is capable of learning, solving problems, and adapting to new situations in a way that is indistinguishable from human intelligence. Sound familiar? That's exactly what QSTAR is, a machine capable of replicating human intelligence with its ability to reason, learn, and adapt. This is some serious Blade Runner stuff. When the board got this letter, they probably became scared of such a rapid commercialization of the new and untested technology. The frenzy of AI taking over the world has been pretty widespread in recent years. People fear that with the ability to understand, reason, and learn, AI could pose a significant threat to society, potentially disrupting critical infrastructure, manipulating people, or even waging war. And while Altman was given a speech during the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit, they decided to fire him for not being either transparent enough or rushing things or something like that. The speech itself, by the way, is pretty interesting. Here's what Sam Altman said. Four times now in the history of OpenAI, the most recent time was just in the last couple of weeks. I've gotten to be in the room when we sort of push the veil of ignorance back and the frontier of discovery forward and get in to do that is the professional honor of a lifetime. This is the most direct and public admission of the fact that AGI is already here, that Altman's team taught computers to think. But how? This is a very interesting bit that I just can't ignore. Let me explain briefly how this QSTAR apparently works, and then I will come back to that firing story. So how does this AGI work? There is no official explanation, but the best theory comes from NVIDIA's senior AI scientist, Jim Fan. NVIDIA, by the way, is one of the main suppliers of all those graphics cards that make ChatGPT possible. So according to Jim Fan, QSTAR is likely using a combination of AI models that work together to learn, plan, and carry out tasks. This is similar to how DeepMind's AlphaGo, the AI that beat the world Go champion in 2016, used multiple neural networks. Go is a notoriously challenging game due to its immense complexity and vast number of possible moves. DeepMind's triumph marked a pivotal moment in AI history, showcasing its ability to surpass humans. AlphaGo learned by playing millions of games of Go against itself. Q Plus may use a similar approach, with one neural network coming up with the steps for tasks, another neural network evaluating those steps and giving feedback, and a third neural network looking at the possible outcomes of each step. This teamwork allows QSTAR to learn and improve very quickly, just like AlphaGo got better at Go by playing against itself. QSTAR gets better at carrying out tasks by working with its different neural networks. Okay, now back to the firing. So the board got scared. What's the big deal? Altman's call for expanded exploration of superintelligence raises concerns, given the long-standing anxieties surrounding AI potential risks and threats to humanity. While AI was once confined to the realm of science fiction, now it is very much a reality. I believe that there was something much more sinister in the works. So sinister that OpenAI's chief scientist, Ilya Sutskever, who was working under the old board of directors, tweeted, I deeply regret my participation in the board's actions. I never intended to harm OpenAI. I love everything we've built together and I will do everything I can to reunite the company. This tweet even left Elon Musk puzzled, so he responded with, yeah, something scared Ilya enough to want to fire Sam. What was it? This makes us all wonder what were the contents of that letter and what a monstrosity is growing somewhere in the depths of OpenAI's labs. But why rehire Altman? Apparently, Microsoft has their tentacles deep in the company, and after investing over $13 billion and owning 49% of shares, they can dictate their terms. So a visionary Altman rushes to Microsoft's office, 
Tell us about the situation and Microsoft makes a few calls that lead to the old board being gone and Altman back on top. I don't wanna be a tinfoil hat guy, but to me, this sounds extremely concerning and I see two possible scenarios here. One, Microsoft's decision to reinstate Altman and replace the OpenAI board of directors can be interpreted as a strategic move to regain control of the company's direction. It's purely financial and Microsoft knows that without Altman, the company wouldn't be as profitable. And second, the AGI is the primary interest for Microsoft for their sinister reasons. By replacing the board with people who share Altman's vision and can lobby Microsoft's interest, Microsoft aims to steer OpenAI back on course. And despite us all knowing Microsoft is the evil empire, both of these scenarios mean the same thing. GPT-5 is coming soon, and it's coming in hot. When? Well, I think the rollout plan looks something like this. First quarter of 2024, OpenAI could announce the completion of GPT-5 development and begin limited beta testing with select partners and researchers. This phase would allow for extensive evaluation of the model's capabilities and potential applications. Second and third quarters of 2024, based on the success of the beta testing phase, OpenAI could expand GPT-5 access to a broader group of testers, including paid users, by this time, it would make sense to make GPT-4 publicly available for free users. This plan seems pretty much in line with how OpenAI used to operate. However, there could be slowdowns. The recent roadmaps shared by OpenAI suggest that OpenAI is currently in the early stages of GPT-5 development, focusing on laying the groundwork for the model's training. While active training of GPT-5 has yet to commence, OpenAI is actively gathering the crucial component for training data. The company recently deployed GPT Bot, a web crawler to expand its corpus by collecting publicly accessible information from the internet. This vast trove of data will fuel GPT-5's learning process, enabling it to develop the ability to generate human quality text, translate languages, and perform various tasks. This leaves a lot of confusion. The roadmap says one thing, but leaked information hints at a more speedy arrival. And I'm personally inclined to believe that the roadmap is mostly the thing for investors, but behind the curtains. That's where the magic happens, where OpenAI is already two steps ahead. Well, should you wait for GPT-5? Well, of course, yes. But it's important to remember that GPT, ChatGPT, is not the only fish in the sea. There are other players that are making significant advances. For example, DeepMind is working on Gemini, a new AI agent that's expected to be more capable than ChatGPT. GPT, Gemini would employ a similar strategy of multiple AIs working together, but with the added power of a large language model. This combination could yield a system that not only responds to contextual and situational data, but also engages in natural language conversations and follows instructions like ChatGPT. It's like GPT-5, but much earlier. And just like Gemini, there are many other cool tools and AIs that you can try. We have made multiple videos where we tested them, so be sure to check them out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.